I love Star Trek, which is why I hate bad Star Trek. So, Austin Kim, what's on the agenda today? Oh, we got another donor request. Another donor request. Go Extra Life. So, was it a big one? Uh, yeah, kinda. Was it big enough for co-hosting? Uh-huh. Who's our co-host? Um, you're looking at her. Even though the camera's not. Oh, okay. I was kind of hoping for something new, but... Alright, instead of an episode with Offscreen Kim, we have an episode with Offscreen Kim. So, what's your episode, Offscreen Kim? Well, you know, because I'm kind of here already, I figured I'd give my episode to somebody else. Oh, huh. Good, good. I wanted someone new. Who do we got? Welcome, young McKinney. I'm looking forward to completing your training. Oh, hey, look, it's Peter Franzen from ChristianGeekCentral.com. Didn't you already request an episode? Don't you barely like Star Trek at all? Except for the reboots for some reason? Oh, I'm afraid you will not be doing Star Trek today. You see, there is a show much, much worse than the very worst Star Trek that has been a blight on geekery for many years, besmirching the name of a good character, and it is high time. <coughs> <coughs> oh, oh yeah. Yeah, there we go. Oh, good call, Holly, with uh, covering my head and leaning over the humidifier. That really cleared up my voice. All right, where were we? Um, oh, yeah, the villainy. Uh, okay, you need to review Smallville, because Smallville freaking sucks. Well, it's got its flaws, certainly. It's got a lot of flaws, but I think overall it had more good than bad in it. But it's, it's Dawson's Creek with superpowers. It's Twilight before there was Twilight. Everybody looks like a model, and they're always posing, and they can't have adult relationships, even though they're supposedly adults. And don't even get me started on the many, 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 many ways in which they totally abused Kryptonite. This was a bad show. No, it was a decent show. I mean, it could have done things better, but it certainly could have done things a lot worse. I mean, it did handle things a lot better than Man of Steel when it comes to Superman. Don't you even bash the Man of Steel while defending this crappy show. At least Marvel had Jonathan Kent. What are you talking about? Jonathan Kent was in Man of Steel. No, even though this guy had the same name, this is not the same Jonathan Kent that we've come to know and love over so many different iterations of Superman. Is it just possible, maybe, that the real Jonathan Kent died when Clark was still really, really little, and then she married this moron trying to compensate for his lack? Maybe. Well, at least he wasn't in Dukes of Hazard. Oh, we're going there, are we? Well, I'll see your Dukes of Hazard and raise you one Waterworld. Which has a valued yet dusty place on my shelf. Waterworld was all that Aquaman fans had for a while, and your Lionel Luther was in Batman and Robin. Like a man. Time to scream. How dare you question the awesomeness of Lionel Luther? Wait, whoa, wait, hold up, guys. Guys, you're both pretty. Can we get back to Smallville, please? She thinks I'm pretty. Yeah, I'll admit it, it's WB, or CW, same thing. And it was weak, especially at the beginning, but you gotta admit, the inherent idea is really good. Clark Kent goes to high school, learns new powers, and tries to discover who he is. Yeah, and they already did it, and it was excellent. I'm so scared. That makes two of us. Yeah, but just because they did it before doesn't mean they can't do it well again. I mean, when has retelling the story of Superman ever been done badly? You're strong. I know. Oh. That. And it's not much of a fresh start if they just keep retreading the same old ideas over and over. Little kryptonite bits all over town where Clark lives. Well, how else are they going to have him fight new supervillains every week? You can't have him take on bank robbers all the time. The kryptonite was a tool they could do so they could mutate villains, usually with an ironic twist to their character somehow. Over and 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 over Okay, yes, I will grant that. Smallville did things over and over again. Over and over and over and over and over and over and over Okay, okay, point taken. They got trapped in their powers and limitations and all of that sort of thing. Same patterns. But you gotta admit, they did a pretty good job with what limited things they had, especially at the beginning. No, they spoiled Superman, and I'm gonna make you acknowledge it. Peter, uh, wait, what, what are you doing? You're gonna review an episode of Smallville, a particularly nasty little bit of vegetable slurry guest starring Amy Adams. Amy Adams? The new Lois Lane from Man of Steel, who was one of the few good things in that movie? We're expecting you tomorrow. 
Which is why I showed up today. I like her! Oh, you know what that means. Spring break. Aww. It's okay, we'll be back to studying in two weeks. Yay! No! Please, sir, mercy! Make of you don't make us do this! Yes, you will watch this episode and you will know the dark side of Smallville. No, no, I'll never give in. Then you will suffer anyway. If you will not be turned, then you will be destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> and now... Execute episode 66. episode at the old Smallville greenhouse. Not that this is a regular place. Moving on. Some girl's gardening, and in the soil she's gardening with are kryptonite chunks. <sighs> this is only the seventh episode of the series, and they already feel like we should know what the kryptonite chunks mean, because they never explain it. It means bad things are going to come, and this person is going to be a villain. And this girl doesn't want to eat dinner. I want to look good for Lana's birthday party. I just think that maybe you're focusing a little too hard on this one party. It's not just the party, it's everything. It's... Nobody likes me. Dad! What, what is wrong with her face? I, I know they've got her in some kind of, like, fat suit prosthetic thing, but they've got her proportions all wrong. She doesn't look big enough to have a double chin like that, and it just makes her look weird and bizarre. Nothing weird here. Cutting the heads off supermodels. It's kind of redundant, isn't it? So instead of actual food, she's eating the vegetable slurry, made from vegetables grown in kryptonite. Appetizing. Sadly, this is not the farthest they'll stretch for bad ideas. <coughs> and then we meet this guy. Hey Ross, uh, we're getting a little game together. You want in or you want to keep whale watching? <laughs> Nothing like fat jokes from a fatter guy. We're going to enjoy seeing him get his comeuppance later, aren't we? I would think so. Dust him back off. Ooh, chill out, cool guy. I didn't know you were chubby chaser. <laughs> Jody, wait. Oh man, you think someone that big would have a thicker skin? You think someone that stupid would have a thicker head? He gives you all that to work with, and that's the best you can come up with? What about Velveeta Hog? What about Squeezel Weasel? Captain Shortbus. Well, this guy's like Neelix without the charm. Oh, starless night of boundless black. Jody, we talked about this. Starving yourself isn't the way. Okay, this is kind of nasty, and of course that stuff looks like it tastes awful, but she's not starving herself. She's drinking vegetable shakes. Again, gross, but this is not anorexia. Oh no, she's normal. Matt, would you? Well, I guess it's time to go once again to Kim's Corner. 168. This is your fat weight. This is your, I'm so desperate, I will drink kryptonite slurry just to not be this hideous, hideous person. That's your number. Well, uh, it's good to know from the very start that this is all the balls you have, WB. This is all you've got. Tell me, are you just so insulated in your tiny little bubble of pretty, pretty people that you honestly do not realize the statistics about the size of the average American woman? Or do you just not care? 
Which of those is worse? I'm not sure. No one is making you do a body acceptance message, as far as I'm aware. If you don't think you can handle this, you don't have to do it. But if you're gonna do it, you better not give us this weak-ass, pathetic excuse for a tale of the ugly duckling. This girl is only ugly in a town full of freaking supermodels like you insist on making Smallville. Congratulations on making every girl in your audience bigger than 168 feel like a piece of crap. And now back to your regularly scheduled Anna drum. And the kryptonite slurry is working. Because she's losing weight. By the second, she actually sees herself getting skinnier. No, she will never get dangerously, unhealthily skinny. She will never get emaciated and skeletal. She apparently is going down to perfect Amy Adams level. Finally, the spirit gum worked. I can get these stupid prosthetics off. We come back from the intro, and Lex is getting a physical. Done already? Looks like your art can go on like that forever. Near, far, where... Die as you get out to! You beat me to it. We get hints here that Lex has some sort of kryptonite mutation beyond that he went bald. That he has some sort of immunity. This will never pay off, like many things in early Smallville, and Lex will just be Lex. Still, he's one of the highlights of the show, so... Ah! Blue model! Rapist! Rapist! The uh, 0.5% of the child, viewers who got that reference, uh, thank you. He's going to be tested to see if the pollution from the Luthercorp plant has polluted his body, like many people claim has polluted the whole area. In fact, they're blaming Luthercorp for all the oddities that have been around. Meanwhile, at her own home, Lana Lang is feeling very overwhelmed by all the privilege she's surrounded by, and how it isolates her from the common man. Having a birthday party at Lex's mansion seems pretty cool to me. Stop being my party a long time ago. Oh, how sad for poor Lana. She's feeling so overwhelmed because all the rich people are throwing her a fancy birthday party in their mansion. I feel her pain. Lana, do you not have any real problems? Or do you just need more supervillains in your life? Done and done! And some more awkward Lana drama, and we're out! After some more pointless banter at the high school, Jody reveals that she likes Pete. Well, I guess it's nice that the girl of the week likes Pete and not Clark. Or Lana. Yeah, that, that's that been done before. She's thinner. Significantly so. Very significantly so. Never better. My diet's just starting to pay off. I bought some new clothes. <laughs> you look great. Thank you for sticking up for me yesterday. Most people wouldn't have done that. Most people can't stand Dustin. Yeah. Don't you hate sand? And Clark serves as Pete's wingman, and this is actually a fun scene. This is part of what I like about the show is it's, you know, likable and fun. You know, I like that they've been showing Pete as a decent person since the very beginning, but I wish they had showed Pete as having some specific interest in this girl before she started getting magically skinny. Even if it wasn't a romantic interest, couldn't we show them as friends, working on the torch together, having some geeky shared interest, anything? I mean, Jody, it's like she lost that weight overnight. If she could do that, half the school would be after that secret. <laughs> what do you mean, if? Lana, hi, come in. Hey, Lana, can I uh, interest you in a latte? All right, Pater, this is what I was talking about. This is Jonathan Kent. I saved the guy's life. So you think you deserve a prize? This is not. What was I supposed to do? Just let him die? Maybe. Jonathan? This is your destiny, son. You are going to touch the lives of so many people. Not! I just want to do something useful with my life. So farming, feeding people, that's not, that's not useful. Jonathan? I guess it's just... Hard looking over at your son and realizing you're talking to a man. Waterworld! Help! The gills do nothing! 